Good afternoon, everybody. It is Saturday, September 25th, 2010. I am Anaris, and this is going to be a one versus one replay versus or with a uh, Greetorp spawning as the Red Terran down in the bottom left. And in the top right, we do have Axlov, who is spawning as Blue Protoss. So one thing you will already notice as this game gets started, this is not a 1.1 game. For whatever reason, now my pre-1.1 replays work. So, yay! I don't have to get drunk and act like a retard on camera anymore. Now, actually, that was kind of fun, but I don't think I'm going to do that again for a very, very long time. I know a lot of people were... I generally got good reception from it, but I don't really want to be a drunk person. Nah, it's, just, it's just not me. So you could definitely probably tell that uh, I was... I don't do that very often. That was actually my fourth time ever being drunk. So you could actually say that you witnessed a important point in my life, maybe. I don't know, whatever. Early barracks. Back to the game. Early barracks, early refinery. You'll notice there is a no supply depot. This kind of play indicates that there is going to be very likely a reaper rush so this is the kind of build order that you would you, if, if protoss player would scout you can see he is getting ready to right now he's going to come up here he's going to see that the gas is done uh scvs are probably going to be transferred onto that very quickly yep there they go right there and this barracks is just about complete so you're going to see a tech lab go down before the supply depot this 100 percent indicates that there is going to be some sort of reaper play which is actually pretty powerful versus protoss however if you are the protoss player you can respond to that by getting a stalker as soon as possible preferably multiple stalker stalkers so you'll generally see reaper rushes throughout all the all of the uh, leagues of StarCraft 2, pretty much from bronze to diamond, and they'll be implemented in different ways, but this is definitely one of the higher level uh, Reaper early pushes in StarCraft 2. So kind of excited to see how this is going to go, as you can see Protoss is responding by dropping the cybernetic score, which is actually pretty standard anyways, so it doesn't really require you to go too much off of the normal build, unless you were planning on doing some crazy one one gate play, which I don't really think that would work too well, but that maybe that's just me, as I am not a pro top tier player. And the cybernetics core is done, so it's very likely we will see the warp gate technology pretty soon here, as one reaper is already out. And you can see this probe, he just came in and missed the one reaper, so he's scouting around, wondering what's going on. He saw that the tech lab was done, he's probably thinking that a reaper already did get out. And for now, it's just going to hang up up here at the Zelnaga Watchtower, uh, keeping an eye on what's going on on the southern portion of the battlefield. And this probe is going to very likely to return to base here, as there is another Reaper out now, pretty much negating any more scouting that uh, the probe can do. As these two are actually going to clash up here at the Zelnaga Watchtower, first blood of the game is going to be drawn. And by blood, I mean mechanical parts, and I don't think there's actually going to be any anywhere. So maybe this probe lost, a, lost an arm or something. I don't know. It looks pretty much okay, but this Reaper is just still hanging out at the Zelnaga Watchtower. As more Protoss units are taken to the field, we do have a Stalker coming up here now, who is going to probably check out what's going on up at the Watchtower. We do have two more Reapers that have entered the field, bringing the count to three total. And taking one more quick look at uh, Terran Base, you can see that both gas refineries are operating now. We do have a Mule down, and we have a little bit of micro here by Greatorp with his uh, with his Reapers taking out the Stalker by microing back. You can see right here that um, the Stalker first attacked this when he microed it back, and then he used um, he used this Reaper to absorb the remainder of the damage. So very nice play. That's effectively how you can take out one Stalker with uh, three Reapers. So this other this other stalker he's kind of learned his lesson he's going to try to take the wide angle and make sure he's not attacked by any reapers up at the top ledge he's going to check the Zonaga watchtower immediately he's going to realize that the reapers have left very likely gone to the base and you can see up here that that's pretty much an accurate assumption as the reapers are going to probably take a wide angle come around and attack the probe line from the rear 
which will at least get him a guaranteed couple free probe kills, as he is going for the probes that are that are mining the gas, which are probably the best three probes that you could get at the moment. He took out four probes total, so total 400 minerals, plus the time lost, you know, from the probes not mining on the gas. So overall, it was probably... I'd say he probably broke about even on that, so not that much of a delay as he did have several probes up here already working and could just transfer a couple over, but still probably worth it nonetheless. As the robotics facility does finish, uh, he is getting out an observer first, so let's take a look actually what Terran is fielding here. He does have a couple marauders, four of them taken to the field along with one lone marine. He's probably feeling very small right now. So a combination of stalkers, uh, zealots, and uh, immortals would probably do very good versus in a more uh, marauder-heavy build. So we'll have to see what goes on here as the... Uh, Protoss player is building a pylon down here to make sure no attacks come in from the rock area that he does not know about, as the Observer is done, I believe. I didn't actually see it come out. He might have cancelled it, though, as I don't see any Observer. I don't see any blue. Okay, we'll just assume he cancelled it, because he did Chrono Boost out that Immortal pro really quick. He was probably thinking he needed to go ahead and get that Immortal out ASAP to combat any sort of early Marauder push, as I believe he does have the Stem Pack upgrade now. Yep, sure enough, he has both Concussive Shells and Stem, making this a very, very dangerous force when he, uh, when he increases the numbers a little bit. So, as you can see right now, he's got, you know, five Stalkers, a couple Zealots, one Immortal, and a Sentry here. Sentry would be good for blocking down the ramp in case the Terran Force decides to try to make run up and make a push quickly. And uh, that'll, you know, give the Protoss Force the ability to pretty much just take pot shots from the top of the ramp. As we do have a probe coming down here to build a Nexus at his natural expansion, so he is expanding somewhat quickly. And you can see down here that uh, Terran does have a Starport and a Factory. He will have to probably expand soon if he wants to contend with the Protoss player, who does now have an Observer who is following the Terran forces just a little bit, kind of parallel almost. But seeing as how it is an Observer, he is falling behind just a little bit because they are not the fastest fastest units on the field. We do have the Command Center here, which was built and does have the Orbital Command taking off to land at the Natural as well. So the Protoss, Protoss forces are going to move out here. They're going to hang out at the top of the Zonaga Watchtower. And pretty much both players are just going to macro up some. It's actually it's a good thing to note. Axe is doing a very good job of keeping, um, keeping an eye on the Zonaga Watchtowers. He's been pretty persistent about it the entire game. And you can see right here this one probe. He knows he's pretty much dead, as you can see he already moved down here. Just to live an extra second or two. And Axe is responding because he knows this Observer is right here. He can see where the Terran army is, so the Terran is going to have to retreat because that was not a very good position to attack the Protoss since they could get a wider, uh, a wider concave and also put units up here on the high ground. And the Terran player would just kind of have to funnel in. So... Taking a look, both players just going to macro up some more. We do have some Hellions taking to the field. I'm not sure if he has the upgrade just yet. It looks like he is researching it now, as well as Protoss is getting Psystorm chrono boosted up in the back of his base. He is just about done researching the charge upgrade for his Zealots. So charge and a couple more Immortals maybe would definitely put uh, give this give this Marauder Heavy Force a run for its money. I'm not really seeing too many more Marauders, though. He is building a Supply Depot, just like the Blue Para put the uh, put the pile on up uh, right there at the rocks. So, yeah, I think both players are just kind of kind of bait each other a little bit, deciding, uh, you know, when the best time to attack is, um, can you catch him out of position, etc. Terran doesn't really have too much vision, I don't believe. No, he doesn't know too much what's going on, but you can definitely see that Axe has a vision, visual advantage with the Observer, who did lag behind just a little bit, and uh, now he sees where the Terran army is. He can still see the consistency of it as well. Sees there's a couple Medivacs, which will actually... They don't have quite 150 energy yet, which is what it would take for a feedback to one-shot the Medivac. But they are going to continue to build up the energy here, as we do have a few more Hellions. We've got five of them total. You can see the expansion is going at full swing, as he was able to kill that one unit up there at the top of the ramp. So the Protoss Force is going to retreat just a little bit. He needs to gather with the rest of his forces and kind of play conservatively a little bit because he did dump a ton of money on this expansion already. He's got it fully saturated, um, just like the Terran. Well, the Terran, not quite as much, but, you know, he does have the two mules here working. Um, of course, he has two orbital commands, so he can do that very quickly. And the Terran player is very likely going to make a push up the back of the ramp. 
which with these Hellion forces, he could actually push up and just let the Hellions go in and maybe he send his forces to the expansion with the Protoss force um, having to react to the Hellions and being out of position. So we'll see what happens here as he does go up the ramp and attacks this pylon and tries to draw the attention of the Protoss force. You can see that's exactly what he's planning to do. He scanned the base, he knows where the uh, where the Protoss, for Protoss forces are, and he is making a very good move by sending these upgraded Hellions in here. They're taking out so many probes, definitely getting in there and running out as quickly as they can because they have definitely drawn away the Protoss army and now they're going to run up the ramp and because the Protoss army was kind of called out of position twice, it's giving him plenty of time to get these Terran forces up here at the top in position to make make a, uh, make a stand up at the top of the ramp. So you can see right here the Marauder Heavy Army is going to get stormed. Very good placement of the storms. You can see it's a ton of damage right there spread out for all the units. However, the Marauders have just enough hit points to barely hang on and continuously shoot at the Stalkers. Not quite enough Immortals here to really finish this off. It is going to be a enough to drive them away, but not enough to completely push and counter and end it. As you can see, these Marauders are now just kiting around, kiting around the Zealots. This is why you don't generally get mass Zealots or anything versus the Marauder Heavy Force, because they can just run around and kite pretty much all day long. So these Stalkers are going to come in here and try to push the Terran Force away just a little bit, try to snipe off a Medivac, but unfortunately that is not going to happen as we do have another very Marauder Heavy build, or, uh, force take to the field hanging out in the middle of the map this is pretty much exclusively what he is pumping out from his barracks you can see that he does have four of them all of them well actually um we do have a ghost coming in now so it might help if I were a little bit more observant of the bases. Uh, I think actually this Ghost Academy went down during the fight. So you can see there's another engagement over here. Protoss actually driving back the Terran forces. As you can see, these medevacs are all pretty low health and somewhat low energy and not really enough forces here to contend with the Protoss army continuing to push back the Terran forces. And he does have another High Templar here with not quite enough energy to do one size storm. But it's the psychological factor that counts, especially since we do have a ghost now with the EMP uh, shot here, which looks like he does have enough energy for one good EMP. So if he is able to shoot an EMP and take out the shields and the energy of this blob right here, it'll be devastating, absolutely devastating for Axe's, uh, Axe's army. So he does have a second expansion going up here. He's trying to stay ahead of the Terran economy. You can see that actually both players are relatively even. This, of course, being a little bit lower on the gas. I'm not too sure why. I believe, oh, here it is. I don't think he actually ever put his third SCV on this uh, on this refinery. Probably just forgot about it, as he does have two other uh, two other refineries right here as well. So, no, I think he actually forgot here. So he does have... Uh, 10 SCVs working on gas as opposed to 12. As the observer is still here, man. I'll tell you what, this observer is just all kinds of doing uh, doing acts of great favor. Let him know exactly continuously what is being built, where it's going, etc. So this has definitely provided invaluable information. And it lets him see that, you know, the Terran is continuing to push a very Marauder-centric build. It's got several medevacs now, about six or seven of them so far. And a lot of Marauders, there was definitely... Oh, that Ghost just died so quickly. Ghost could not even get off an EMP round as more Psy Storm definitely nails the, uh, nails the Marauders and drives back this Terran force which is trying to funnel in but unfortunately the Protoss had too good of a concave and was able to just decimate the Terran forces so he is using Sim Simpak to get ahead of the Zealots, try to kite, get a couple extra kills, reinforce with more Marauders but you know it's barely just enough as both players are trying as hard as they can, and but both armies are just whittling down super quick. However, the Protoss is going to come out on top.